Aloha everyone and welcome back to the CO2 Rundown. I'm your host Chad Owens. Woo! What a big, big weekend it was for University of Hawaii sports. That's why I'm rocking this jersey today. Uh, I'm excited to jump on into today's segment. So like we always do, let's dive on in to the CO2 Rundown. All right, it's a new week, and that means a new opportunity for you in football fever. You need to go get yourself a football fever ballot uh, in the Honolulu Star Advertising newspaper. Fill that thing out, select your picks, uh, your weekly uh, NFL and college picks, and compete with myself and the rest of the panelists for a chance to win $500 cash. Look, you got to fill that out and turn it into select long drugs by Wednesday to give yourself an opportunity. And at the end of this thing, we got a grand prize. A big green egg Kamado grill is going to one lucky winner. Mahalo to our football fever sponsors, Mercedes-Benz of Honolulu, Hawaiian Telecom, and Long's Drugs for making that possible. Good luck. Let's go. All right, man, look, I am still on fire from our Rainbow Warrior football team's Huge win on Saturday night, right? Defeating ranked Fresno State 27-24. First time we defeated a ranked opponent in 11 years. And we did so without our starting quarterback. Shevin Codero was out with a shoulder injury that our team did a great job of sort of hiding that. Uh, he sustained that injury last week. And so the whole week, Fresno State's preparing for Chev. And surprise, surprise, true freshman, Braden Shager, Stepped in and did a great job. He managed the football, and I love the game plan that we put together to help him out. Hey, we went to the ground attack. We rushed for over 200 yards. And so with this win, man, it just it, it builds so much momentum, so much confidence for this team. Right? Defensively, we called six turnovers. And that was the difference in the game. Right? I, I've, I've talked about this many of times in, in, the, in the game of football. Right? It's turnovers and penalties, and we won both those battles. Are we called six turnover? We only turned it over once. So that's a difference of five. We won that. That's the difference of the game. We were better on the penalty uh, marks. That helps us. And at the end of the day, we finished. Defensively, Fresno was driving to, to, to potentially. They were already in field goal range for the tying field goal. Quarterback throws another pick. Defense calls another turnover, led by Corey Bethley. Two picks, one sack, one forced fumble. This dude was all over the place. And he was the defensive player of the game. Seen him smashing the rock uh, after the game. That's their post-game, post-win uh, sort of tradition. And look, you know, Coach Graham got these guys going. And I'm excited and I'm happy because I got to speak to these guys. Right on Friday at their at their rock walk remembering all the past players before them got to link arms with these guys and and it was just myself and the team and that was special and i shared a very special message with them on what it means to be a rainbow warrior and man they proved it they proved what rainbow warrior football is on saturday and going into the bye week this is huge this is huge and the only the only damper on this win was that there was no fans in the stands to celebrate with these guys, right? They deserved that. They deserved that. I'm going to talk more about that here in a minute. Uh, Curtis Moriyama got an amazing article that you guys got to check out. Congrats again. Go Bows. Enjoy, enjoy the off week. And secondly, we got our Rainbow Wahine volleyball team who did their thing over the weekend, starting off Friday. Uh, afternoon, they defeated Long Beach State uh, to remain unbeaten in the Big West Conference and followed that up with a five-set win against Cal Fullerton on Sunday. Uh, after winning the first two sets, it seemed like they were going to go through another sweep and just make it a nice, smooth, clean weekend. But Cal Fullerton battled back, pushed it to five sets, and we were able to get it done. Way to go, uh, girls. Again, like I said, we're undefeated in conference play, and uh, that's, 
that's expected, right? We expect to win. We expect to dominate our conference. I know that's, that's the mindset that Coach Robin Omo is putting into that team. And so, look, if you want to dive a little deeper into this story on how amazing these girls did over the weekend, check out Dave Reardon's column in today's Honolulu Star Advertiser. All right. I'm, I alluded to it a little bit on the football, uh, ending that game, no fans. That was the one damper. Curtis Moriyama has an article in today's Honolulu Star Advertiser that you need to go read. He has stats based on other states who are hosting fans, 60 plus thousand, 100,000 fans at the game, right? Their numbers statistically, where we at versus where they're at, as far as the pandemic goes, their numbers are higher, right? We're way lower all right? on, on a countrywide, like we're way lower, right? So there's really no reason why we shouldn't have fans in the stands supporting our teams, and celebrating these, these amazing wins. Curtis Moriyama has been around for a very long time. He's a very passionate editor, fan, and football fan especially. You definitely have to go read this article. Um, it is, it is eye-opening. All right, Curtis, thank you so much for this insight and for providing this perspective. Hopefully, it creates some change, some immediate change. Mahalo. All right. In the NFL, all right, lots of games to talk about. A lot of, lot of amazing plays happen, but I'm going to talk about the GOAT Bowl, right? Arguably the greatest fo football player of all time, one of the greatest athletes of all time, Tom Brady, returning to New England to take on one of the greatest coaches of all time, greatest football minds of all time, Bill Belichick. They're returned. They're, they're reuniting and... Uh, this one did not disappoint. Man, Mac Jones, up until this game, was just, to, in my opinion, just playing average. He was sort of up and down. He was, you know, but this game, I feel like Mac Jones had a little extra motivation to prove that, hey, I can be that guy to lead this team. I mean, he's not quite Tom Brady yet. He's far from that. But he battled Brady. And, you know, it was a back and forth game, very defensive game. You know, these low-scoring games uh, tend to be that way. And the Bucks just squeezed it out, right? 19 to 17. The Patriots had a chance to win it and doink the field goal off the goalpost. But that's just, that's the Brady, man. I feel like the football gods are in Brady's favor. Uh, and it just happens to go that way for that guy. So congratulations to Tom Brady. Um, and I, I did see an article. I did see, I seen something that, I don't know if you guys saw, but the post-game handshake, Belichick came in, Brady, it was literally like a second, boom, and Belichick was out. But I did hear that Belichick made his way to the Bucks locker room and spent about 20-something minutes just he and Brady probably catching up. And, you know, those conversations are, those are special. You know, uh, Brady meant a lot to him. He meant a lot to Brady. The Kraft family. The, the, the whole organization, you know, that's, I don't think that that's a tarnished relationship. I think that was part of Brady's growth and development as a player and as a person. And now he's just at this stage of his career. And that relationship will always be uh, an amazing one. And so a historic moment for the NFL. Who, and, and Brady <laughs> breaks Drew Brees' all-time passing yardage record. And he's got more to go so congrats on that and uh, man what an epic um, day to be a part of football and to be a football fan major league baseball action uh man the san francisco giants um had a, a franchise best to finish a regular season 107 wins that's the league best as well they won up the uh, defending World Series champs, the Dodgers who finished second with 106 wins the playoffs are starting this week. And to me, that's when baseball gets interesting. That's when you get the, you know, Bautista bat flips. That, that's when I turn it on. That's when I get excited to watch baseball. And that's when the players and fans crank it up a little bit more. So congratulations to the Giants, man. Um, you know, I feel like every single baseball team, baseball, in my opinion, is a, it's that historic game, right? It's the game that, that, uh, 
that just brings you back to playing catch with the pops in the backyard and it's going to the park and doing things. It's that game. It tells many stories. And so that's what I love about baseball is that the stories of each franchise continue to evolve each and every year. So congrats, uh, Giants. Good luck in the playoffs. And that is it for today's show. I want to thank you all so much for tuning in. Man, what an amazing weekend of sports it was. And what an amazing week we've got ahead of us. What, we, what you got ahead of you. So I hope you're starting the week off proper. I hope your mindset is focused. And I hope you're ready to win. Because that's exactly what our University of Hawaii teams showed us this weekend. It's about getting those wins despite adversity. You've got to come through. we got to overcome. And we got to get the dub. I'll see you guys come hump day Wednesday.